So um, we are going to have uh, three communications uh, with uh, well, Everardo uh, Reyes Garcia, Enzo D'Armenio, and uh, Bruno Surace. So let's start with uh, Everardo Reyes Garcia, who is a professor in the Department of Digital Humanities at the University, uh, the University Paris Wit. He co-directs the Master in Digital Humanities and is Vice President of the University for Digital Affairs. Is a member of the lab of the lab paragraph and an associate member of the cultural analytics lab. His research focuses on the fields of information design, media art, hypermedia, and digital culture. He combines semiotic theory with experimental practice using software, programming languages, and visual computing techniques. He has organized several conferences and exhibitions dedicated to digital art and web studies. He directed the Art Papers program for SIGGRAPH uh, in 2019 and is a member of the Bureau of the International Symposium on Electronic Arts. He has published, edited and translated a dozen of books, including the monograph, the image Interfa interface, graphic supports for visual information. And Everando is going to present a communication titled More Than a Feeling Relationship Between Cognition and digital media. Everardo, the floor is yours. Many, <clears throat> many, many thanks, uh, Christina, and to everybody for being here and uh, those who are connected at their offices or uh, their home. And thanks, of course, to the organizers, Maria Giulia, Massimo, and Claudio, uh, who's the first time that I'm meeting in person, thankfully, finally. finally yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what I got. Um, the invitation from the organizers about thinking about uh, communication that uh, talks about visual semiotics and uh, cognition and the, the face as well. I, 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 I came back to some of my background and uh, mainly to uh, interfaces, user interfaces and um, software design, or at least uh, uh, design of uh, digital uh, tools, content. So that's what I uh, would like to talk about. So it's great to be to be back to the facets uh, uh, team and, uh, and uh, gatherings, because I remember the first one was three years exactly ago in, in Poland. And uh, at that time, I was saying, well, you know, we don't know, we, you don't know what this is going to lead and uh, i was thinking that maybe at some point you would be interested as a team to create to develop to gather images to analyze images to restitute these images in graphical form so at that time what i was saying is that um, i identified some what i call interface logics inspired by some other uh, colleagues that work on media logics, even games, you have operational logics. Ian Boga talks about that. So uh, what I said is that, well, you know, interfaces like general public or like are easy to use or presented such as easy to use for the general public, such as Microsoft Azure, include those kind of uh, interface logics. So I was saying, well, perhaps it should be uh, good to, to 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 understand or to establish a dialogue with such user interfaces as a, a language, indeed, as a language uh, object, as a cultural object, as a mediation between what the uh, sender and the receiver, the creator and the viewer are. Uh, so uh, they are living in between. So um, that was the thing that I was saying. So these were the nine interface logics that I identified at that time. And uh, so now, three years afterwards, I would like to, to present this the following plan because in, in it's of course um, in close relation to what, what has been said before. I would like to take a step up or to the front, or, I don't know. I would like to relate to, to, to media, to images, to, to 
uh, screens, but from the side of the interface, the user interface that is required to access to interact with those visual graphical content. So I am mainly in the expression part from a semiotic point of view. And um, of course, thinking about this expression content, what is the relationship with us as a viewer and creators? So mainly, um, uh, I'm going to also focus on uh, cognition. So media and, and, and software, part one of four. Let me start with this. Uh, perhaps you have, uh, of course, seen this uh, face because it became super famous. I remember it from many photograph books back in the 80s and the 90s. My uncle had this one, this, this book, and I opened that, and it was this woman like everywhere, right? So I'm, I'm seeing you like smiling. Perhaps you know that you already know the story because uh, she, is, she, is, she was not a generated, artificially generated face, right? She was indeed a, a, a model, Lena Forsen, who was uh, indeed uh, published this photo in a Playboy issue in 72. So the, the following year, it was scanned and used and so purposely used as a, as a test image for image processing mainly. Uh, tasks or routines. So, uh, well, this is one example that I chose it because it's from 2013. That's almost 40 years after the photo was taken that's still used, right? So, uh, what, what I'm saying is that it became super famous, even it appeared in, 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 in the cover of the book uh, of very respectable, reputable and influential books on digital image processing. So um, what's interesting is that, well, first of all, this is, uh, 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 we, we need, so this kind of test images, uh, we want to uh, use those images. Then if, you, if we think about media, not as um, what we are seeing in the image, but about what the materiality of the image is, then we uh, think about indeed the software that is used to access, to view, or to manipulate those images, right? So what I'm saying is that if you open this image with, let's say, Photoshop, we have access to, well, a variety of course of uh, tools, a variety of uh, uh, methods that uh, are, of course, uh, chosen, done, developed to meet some requirements by, say, a community, in this case of perhaps digital artists or designers who uh, relate or use Photoshop, okay? It could be, of course, that uh, you use other, other similar software, and this, well, this is what's interesting, that sometimes using or choosing uh, the, the, the software that you want to use is also an ideological choice, not only a technical, not only uh, an economic, but also sometimes really an ideological choice. So why do you use Photoshop instead of GIMP, for instance? Anyhow, uh, when you access those, you have this canonical way of accessing the, those functions, actions, through this user interface. We call this the menu, of course. You have this list of uh, actions. If you open the same image in another software, this one is called Fiji. Fiji stands for Fiji is just image J. <laughs> so image J is a, it's a software for scientific visualization. That means that it's used by medicines and, uh, and uh, radiologists. So you have more or less the same access, the same menus and this organization of tools and commands. But perhaps the, 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 this is when we are start seeing that there's a different language, right? There's a different language that addresses the, the, the functions, the actions. It's sometimes even, even, even interesting to, to notice that uh, one same, uh, let's say, routine or series of actions could be called the same in two different words or terms or vocabulary for two different software or applications. 
And that's, of course, because those software are uh, developed, done, and, 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 and distributed by communities or sectors, right? So this is only just a quick, brief example through, through what we can access. I think that's what's, what's interesting is that uh, many of those software are, of course, so as you can see, format or image format, like JPG or PNG. So it's um, possible to those software are based on that on, the, on that format. So we can open any JPG in, in those software, and at the same time, those software are compiled to be open in operative operating systems such as Mac OS. So I don't th I think that there is no excuse. I mean, for researchers that are interested in digital images, digital media, to install to go ahead and try those kind of uh, tools, because we are also dealing with ideology, right? So this is what I am, uh, I think that that's what I'm saying, to make a quick point that uh, digital media have become really mediated through through software. Of course, we can print, we can show, we can exhibit, we can do many, many other stuff, but still software remains a, a, a strong um, uh, actor in this in these ecosystems. So what is mainly used through user interface, and I would say mainly because, of course, many other software uses uh, command line or other things, but mainly media formats allow the interoperability of software. And I would quote my colleague uh, Lev Manovich, media today is really a set of software techniques constantly in development. So uh, starting from there, I'm going to go to this point number two, cognitive approaches. So, what and uh, how do we relate? Because that's what I, I was promising in my title, right? So what, what, what would be those relationships between media, images, and cognition? So I have to go back, as I was saying, to one of my, my, my uh, primary or, or fields that I studied while doing my PhD was um, uh, on hypertext, hypertext, hypermedia. Could be something like sounds very archaeological or, uh, or or very from the last century, and I'm sorry if there are some colleagues here, but you know, indeed, what I think is that hypertext, of course, when the web came, um, it has two effects, right? For some, the web became equivalent to hypertext, but on the other side, we we forgot what a real fully developed hypertext system uh, implies. So I think that also implicitly some hypertext techniques on hypermedia became also the operating system. So uh, back at that time we were saying, okay, so hypertext can be studied from two uh, standpoints, systems, which is very technical, and uh, models, which is what we see on the screen. And what we see on screen can be, of course, from a cognitive uh, um, perspective, could be, I mean, uh, analyzed or uh, um, studied from cognitive sciences. That means that uh, we understand the users as uh, in their uh, human capacities, dealing with uh, non-linearity, ergonomics, like uh, human factors, uh, but also the properties of the device, because that's when we were saying, okay, so it's not the same if you want to explore a system in a small screen or in a big screen, in a touch screen or in a, so ergonomics. And many of those models were really oriented towards education. How do we, we how can we teach and learn through um, hypertext systems? In the 86, one of the really influential books that I wrote, that I read at that time was this, this one, Understanding Computers and Cognition by uh, Terry Winograd and uh, Fernando Flores, who, by the way, Terry Winograd would direct the um, thesis of uh, some guys who then developed Google, right? So Page, Larry Page, and Sergey Green. And Fernando Flores was a politician in Chile. So what they said in that book is that language uh, uh, was very important for, for, for thinking about 
doing software or designing applications. So they said that, well, um, language, of course, uh, you, you, you are really here what, what I am saying is that, so the context, the context of the, 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 the language was, was so very, very important. This theory is still, is still valid today, it's still uh, used, and of course it has been, there are many other theories for designing systems like user-oriented, like uh, participatory design, many, many emotional design, many, uh, let's say, uh, trends on design. But the thing is that they were like putting attention to language, so and uh, context. I'm thinking what from a semiotic, semiotics point of view, I think we, we understand that, of course, uh, in, a, in a society, the, the, the background of the viewer, of course, it's very important for understanding and establishing dialogue, right? Uh, by those years, of course, Brenda Laurel published, edited this book. She was working at uh, for Apple uh, with one of the main designers, Alan Kay. And uh, Alan Kay in this book was uh, saying that he got really inspired. His, his own personal view about interface design came from psychology, indeed, and uh, specifically from Jerome Brunner and uh, Jean Piaget. So he was saying, well, you know, uh, it's about doing with images makes symbols. That was the, the, the motto, right? So there were many multiple mentalities identified by Brunner, which is inactive, iconic, symbolic. And it was about like building on those capacities or human capacities to uh, make like uh, uh, systems user friendly or operational. Mm, well, though that, that, what, that was happening at that time, my lab started a series of, of uh, conferences that dedicated to hypertext that still exists today, the h 2 pdm hypertext hypermedia. So um, we, at, the, at, the, at that time, at the lab, we, we, we did, uh, got like uh, uh, bigger with uh, the, the psychology team who came to the to the lab, especially Pierre Rabardel, who was working on ergonomics, and he came saying that well, you know, there is this notion of le sujet capable, that the, the 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 user who understands, who would like to, uh, such as would Gilbert Simondon would say, like would like to establish a more a uh, deep dialogue with the, 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 the tools and to understand how they work and to see them more than just uh, material properties. So, yeah, in, in summary, that's what uh, could be said, that uh, the user is seen from many different angles, many different, uh, 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 like a, like a multidimensional uh, um, actor, and uh, systems unavoidable have to perhaps choose one point of view or take in consideration the complexity uh, besides or are, that surrounds uh, the, 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 the human user. So uh, again, I will not specifically read what you are seeing on screen, but these are some of the, the images about the, the, the user. So then to, to my last part, uh, some experiences, because as you may know, I really like to do my own stuff, to, to program a little bit some experiences in order to, to, to see how uh, stuff work. So let me, let me show you just a couple of examples, because at that time when, my, when, when, when in our team we were saying, okay, so, okay, it's, this is good, but is it possible <laughs> to challenge those traditions and to go uh, to, 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 to use or to create or to design tools, but indeed as an argument, not only as a tool to be used or to solve a necessity or to answer a, a, a practical defined question, but rather 
a, a tool that would be a subjective uh, mm, argument or position or proposition. So that's what that was the idea. How do we do something different with what with what exists? And of course, uh, as you know, uh, when you uh, use uh, software and if you want to do your own uh, tools, you have to go to the uh, lower level, which implies using uh, computer code, so or programming programming code. So this is, uh, I think that 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 was important at that time, and I think that's still important today, even though the results could be. Sorry, because it's not regenerating this. That's the problem of being live, right? But well, it's, yeah, this this one is okay. So so these are stain poems. My my advisor Jean Pierre Bart was doing what he calls stain poems, poems that relate to life, and the idea was to propose something radically different. Um, again, with my experiments, um, of course, this one is a... Uh, so the idea is to start interrogating, questioning, not precisely what we see in the media, in the image, but how can we see the image differently? How can we use the tools, perhaps, that we use differently? How do we? I am interested in making new kinds of images. So this is a small piece of software that the only thing that would do is to uh, just take a picture and then represent the same picture in, in as a series of pixels. It, it's been interactive. So the thing is that uh, I mean the idea was to start interrogating and saying that of course the, what Massimo was saying about the scales is interesting because we can analyze. 1,000, 2,000 different images, but if you see the image itself, it is 1,000 or 2,000 pixels, right? So we have different views. Well, this is the, the same, in the same line stuff that it's done just to see the, the image differently. It's even, it's even an animation, this one. Uh, we can just uh, do uh, different Cool stuff with, with with images and using a little bit of of, uh, of uh, goodwill and computer code, right? This one I cannot show because it's a, it's a I will I will not take more of your time. But I mean, with students at the lab, we are trying to do exactly I mean that kind of stuff, like analyzing visual uh, information in different ways. Okay, and then to 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 come to my to my last point, I was wanted to say that this is I call the the, the 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 presentation more than a feeling because it's not only cognition important for 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 um, our academic or artistic or creative or uh, engineering work both but also the emotional aspect also the way that we relate between us we, we, we other, and uh, I think that we establish this kind of links between us because we get along well, because we like or we understand. So what I'm saying is that this kind of representations in here is like a, an effort to trace those kind of relationships and saying, well, in time, we can like, uh, besides or beyond cognition, there's also emotions that can be connected, traced, and said that uh, in this case, because we are, I am a little bit involved with uh, this association called SPIGRAPH, uh, we uh, extracted all the pieces that have been exhibited from 81 to 2019. We can see some stuff and really interesting for the specialists in the field uh, patterns, such as Daniel Sandin, who was working with the uh, uh, other colleagues, such as uh, Donna Cox, but uh, it was interesting to see how he related to one of the guys who has exhibited the most at SIGGRAPH, which is Chark Suri. Anyhow, but maybe some is for the specialists. We can also see in here that in time as well, a couple of artists or uh, uh, still work together or create or um, uh, 
do work and it's interesting to see that in time of course this is just um, one last example to say that uh, i've been working also with uh, other colleagues uh, such as andres burbano with what we call emotional networks that uh i will tell this story in another at another occasion but we were working on the mexican origins of cybernetics um, so it's interesting to see how a person who, whose name is Enrique Freyman in the center played a key role on publishing cybernetics in 1948 because he was a Mexican editor living in Paris and Wiener was a, a, a computer scientist, neuroscientist working with Arturo Rosenblut in Mexico and uh, why he met Arturo because he was also meeting some other Mexicans, uh, Santillana, and uh, uh, well, this another story, and many other uh, key figures are involved, such as Diego Rivera, Gandhi, Nicola Burbaki, <laughs> who was also published by Enrique Freeman, and they said that even Freeman invented Burbak. Well, anyhow, this is a, another story that I will tell at another time, but it is a really an emotional network, right? So I think that that's what I was trying to say. I think that I am a little bit far from my time, right? Oh, you have five minutes more I if you want, minutes. yes. Okay. So, the, well, um, this is what I am saying, is that uh, all those kind of uh, tools, software, artworks, if you want, experiments, visual experiments, graphical experiments, uh, combine different meanings, there is, of course, this technical one, which is the most, I mean, the basic has to work or has not to work. We want it not to work in a certain way. Uh, there is, of course, this content domain, how the language, the terms, the vocabulary are employed through the interface, of course. But it, there's also this bigger cultural ideological uh, layer, which uh, I think is also implied and uh, very important. This is a device that I, I, I propose to analyze those kind of images. But I think that's, that, that, that is why, that is why sometimes we can understand some websites that were the language that is uh, written, perhaps we don't understand at first, right? Um, unless you know Bulgarian and you have been to the visual anthropology lab at NGU, but we understand, of course, the graphical, the, 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 the visual composition. We understand this, what I'm calling the technical, even perhaps the content domain. We can even project in this embodied cognitive capacity that if we click on those uh, bars, it will perhaps, you, you can even imagine that it will slide. You can even imagine that it will slide to the upper or to the lower part of the screen. And I think that's the same that we can, or that's uh, an interesting um, method to, to, to analyze or to understand or to relate with AI and machine learning uh, uh, interfaces. Because not only they become easy, super easy to use, they invite to, to, to be used, but now we can also uh, uh, try to create our own our own tools based on, on those uh, procedures. So this one is a website that Hugging Face. I don't know what face is again here, but uh, it's a, it's a, like a sandbox to create your own models. So conclusions, and uh, that that's what I'm saying today is that it's important to uh, not forget and to work on multi-support, multicultural and even intergenerational media, because some of these software uh, perhaps will not be used in five years, so maybe there's going to be other. That's what, I'm, that's what we all say to our students that, I don't know what's going to be the next TikTok, but TikTok is going to be, you are going to be the old generation in 10 years that use TikTok today. So we'll see. Speculative experimental informatics, it shows how software behaves differently. That's why I think it's important to do experiments, even if they are like weird, mainly through ruptures of function, because we have to understand even such 
rupture, when you have a bug, you have to understand why this bug is happening. And so we understand how the software operates, right? I think that's it. Lessons from hypertext cognitive model. I, this is very straightforward and perhaps we are not into the solving problems that we are not even know the, what the problem is, right? So we, we have to perhaps wait. So merci beaucoup. Thank you very much.